What if I told you that every decision you make is actually forming and shaping the person you're becoming? Like the things you spend your time doing, watching Netflix, scrolling through Instagram, listening to music, going to church, the people you surround yourself with, having your phone on you all the time. Even if you don't think you're doing anything with your time, you're being shaped, like doing the dishes, going for a walk, waiting in line for something. As followers of Jesus, the question we should be asking ourselves is, who am I becoming? Because we're always becoming something. Ultimately, we should desire to become more like Jesus. I've recently realized that life is a process of becoming, and we are constantly being formed by the things that we do and the things that we don't do. This time in particular, while we're at home, we've been stripped away of many things, and it's forced me into figuring what's important and how to spend my time differently. An example for me is watching sports. It's become clear to me that I, uh, I watch too much, and I thought about it too much, and I talked about professional sports too much. Um, there's nothing wrong with sport, believe me. God can use sport to glorify his name, and that's not my point. My point is that I'm realizing how many God moments I've probably missed over the years because of my time being overfilled with consuming and talking about sport. It's kind of funny, I've actually had more meaningful conversations with, with my friends lately because there just simply is less small talk about the game and more Christ-filled conversation and prayer. I think this is because ultimately, what we give our attention to, we become. Um, if we set up our lives or give space for Christ and spend intentional time with him, we will become more like him. It's that simple. If you have to think about the things that you give your time to, what would be on your list? Let's look at Jesus' life for a moment. Jesus did not rush through life. He always had time for other people. Um, even when he's in the middle of doing something, he made time for people. He wasn't distracted by meaningless things or stuff. And perhaps most importantly, he always carved out time to be with God. Um, and there's so many examples all throughout the Gospels of Jesus getting away to spend time in meditation and prayer. I think sometimes this gets overlooked. When we read about Jesus in the Bible, um, we want to see and read about the big miracles, or I know I do personally. Um, do you know what actually happened, though, right before the, the famous miracle of feeding 5,000? He was alone with God, away from distractions, praying. It wouldn't make for a great movie. If Jesus, the Son of God, who is part of the Trinity, needed to spend time with the Father, then how much more is it necessary for us to do this? I think this is especially hard, though, to do in our culture of busyness, um, pressure to succeed, always being connected through technology. There's basically these distractions that can take us away from spending time with God. Um, but we have the opportunity to set up our lives, the rhythms, and the formations of our day. But if we're not intentional with how, how we do this, we're going to continue doing the same old thing we've always done, or we're going to allow culture to nudge us to do certain things. So these decisions you make, these decisions though, they shouldn't be rules. Um, I shouldn't do this, or I should read my Bible because of this. But rather, think of terms of who am I becoming by doing this, or by not doing this. Daily habits, formations, rhythms, like spending time in prayer, scripture, um, meditating, sitting together with a family at the supper table, those rhythms give shape to who you are. Think of these rhythms like a trellis. These habits form the structure that allow you, the vine, to grow in a way that produces the most good fruit. Just imagine um, a grape vine scattered on the ground without a trellis to hold it up. It wouldn't produce much good fruit. It wouldn't produce it produces a small amount of grapes. Um, but if it had a trellis holding it up, it could produce that good fruit. If you remember back a year ago um, when I spoke at chapel at the school, uh, I spoke on the importance of allowing yourself to get bored and how as a culture I feel like we've lost the ability to be bored. And there's numerous reasons behind that um, because of the distractions that keep us from being bored. And I gave you three challenges. The first one is to try not to look at your phone while walking. Second was when you're standing in line waiting for something, try not to go to your phone and just like take in your surroundings. It actually helps you develop patience. Um, and the third one was being able to put your phone away for a certain amount of time during the day. 
Um, a number of you actually took me up on this challenge, or the first two at least, and sent me messages and said how you're going to do it. And I thought that was super cool. Um, and I implemented a lot of the challenges in our life, in our family's lives here over the last year. But there was the, the last one, it took me 14 months to actually put into practice. Um, and just over the, over the last few weeks, we've started um, turning off our phone for one hour every day, and then also for 24 hours in, um, during the week. So we, we have one day a week where we turn off our phones. And it's been really good, really cool. And it's created some really neat time with our family, with God. Um, and it's tangible. I can feel it. The song I'm going to sing to you I wrote this past week after a student of mine recently, during devotions, she said that she was realizing that although many things have been taken from her, um, she has all that she needs. And that statement just hit me. Um, that God has provided everything that we need. And as if it was right in front of us all along, but now we have more time and space to actually see it. And it reminded me of Psalm 23 when David said, I have all that I need. And another version says, I shall not be in want. I find Psalm 23 and 24 to be just beautiful psalms. The desire of King David to be present with God. He makes me lie down in green pastures, he said. He leads me, into a, he leads me to a quiet stream. He restores my soul, guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Um, you are with me and you comfort me. He talks about the staff being comforted. 24 talks about how everything in the world is his and climbing the hill of the Lord to be with him in his holy place, to commune with God, to be with God. So this song that I wrote, um, it's, it's helped make sense of some of the feelings I've had um, during this time. And a lot of it comes from Psalm 23 and 24. And uh, I've gone through waves of lament, wishing things were normal, but then I've hit with waves of gratitude, um, that the Lord has given me what I need. And this time's also allowed me to create better rhythms in my life to spend time with God. So I hope you enjoy. <laughs> Give me 
eyes to see you and all the blessings your truths